Human life and human progress depend on water. Water that is both servant and master. For the majority of women in the rural areas of the developing world, water is the master. Much of their time and energy is used in its daily pursuit. Children, too, must join in the unending task. The goal of the 80s is to bring a safe and adequate water supply and sanitary facilities to as many people as possible throughout the world. However, the task is enormous. For more than half of the people in the developing world do not have enough safe water, and the population continues to grow. Lack of knowledge about disease leads to practices hazardous to health. Wells lie unprotected and open to contamination. Even if the water source is safe, the surroundings are often polluted and the water is in danger of becoming contaminated before it is used. And the water that is not used may become a breeding ground for disease. Few people are dirty by choice, but as long as they live in such environments, clean water alone will make little difference. The task of the 80s is even more difficult because about three quarters of the people in the developing world do not have adequate sanitary facilities. With contamination from human and animal feces, household and industrial wastes, water, the sustainer of life, becomes an agent of death. Cholera, typhoid, dysentery, and other waterborne diseases kill thousands of people every day. But the main culprit is not water. It is man's inability to safely dispose of his own feces. Whether the fecal contamination is transmitted through food, insects, or water, it often leads to the same thing, diarrhea, dehydration, and death. Acute diarrhea can strike people of all ages, but every year it kills about five million children under five years of age. Repeated attacks of diarrhea will eventually lead to severe malnutrition, a condition which kills millions more. There is little hope of preventing such sickness and death as long as people get their water from polluted sources. Although water can be made safe by boiling, most people do not have enough firewood to boil drinking water on a regular basis. As the dry season advances, the lineup at the well grows, and people wait longer to take home their share of water, water that is polluted. Hello. 
A family may have plenty of nutritious, well-cooked food, but no access to clean water. Surface water is seldom safe for drinking. It is easily contaminated by both animals and humans. Human wastes are especially dangerous because they may carry bacteria, viruses and parasites which can cause diarrheal disease. These organisms cannot be seen except with a microscope, but they will be represented in this film by the moving gray-white color you see here. This contamination can quickly spread to be brought home by anyone drawing water for their family. The family's water is used for more than cooking or washing. It is usually consumed directly. And it takes only a very small amount of such contamination to cause diarrheal disease. Disease can spread from one person to the whole community through water. The same water is used over and over for different purposes, and the contamination increases. Although moving rivers and streams may look clean, they're usually full of these invisible and dangerous organisms. It is better to use water from wells. However, using a well does not guarantee clean water. Often the area around the well is also contaminated with human and animal waste. If the well is open and unprotected, such contamination will soon make contact with the water inside. There is no way to keep an open well clean. So families who consider themselves fortunate to have a well may be no better off than those who take their water directly from rivers and streams. In many families, the older children look after their younger brothers or sisters. While the contaminated water may not make the older children sick, it could be a deadly poison for the younger ones, who have not had time to build up a resistance to the contaminants in the water. Contamination and disease are ever-present in many homes. Lack of cleanliness in preparing and serving food and the practice of allowing food to stand at room temperature for hours increases the risk of diarrheal disease. And it is the weakest members of the family, the very old and the very young, who are the most common victims. Unfortunately, it is often the mother's hands that pass the contamination from a sick child to other family members by way of food and water. Contamination can easily spread through the household. For example, a mother in the middle of preparing a meal has to attend to a child with diarrhea. She washes her hands after cleaning the child, but she does not scrub thoroughly, nor does she use soap. Like many people, she thinks that her child's feces are harmless. When she returns to the kitchen, her hands are still contaminated. The contamination is passed on to food and dishes.
the contamination is then passed on to other family members, and the whole family may soon be ill. When children are sick with acute diarrhea, they must be treated promptly, for they are rapidly losing essential body fluids and may die. Mothers should be given thorough instruction on why children get diarrhea and on the proper way to give oral rehydration solution. The solution is a mixture of water, glucose, and essential salts, which replaces missing body fluids and helps restore the appetite. The child should also be breastfed or given energy-rich foods as soon as he or she will eat. Oral rehydration and good food can save lives but they will not prevent the child from getting sick again. The mother and child will continue to spread contamination to one another unless changes are made in household hygiene. Diarrheal disease will remain with the family when poorly washed hands touch food directly, when water is contaminated by hands, or is left unprotected from birds and animals. And when bottles, dishes, utensils, and food are not properly protected, the home is by no means the only source of contamination and disease. Without basic sanitation practices, the whole environment becomes contaminated. Disease is spread by the runoff from wells, kitchens, and poorly built latrines. Some latrines are built too close to wells, resulting in contamination of drinking water. Or they may be built over rivers, which spreads pollution even further. Even if latrines are properly constructed, they may be poorly maintained and will become a source of disease. And soon people will stop using such latrines with inevitable results for the next person who draws water. Many people believe that it is not really harmful to defecate in an open field or behind a bush, an understandable practice if latrines are poorly maintained. When a latrine is built on higher ground than a well and too close to it, contamination will reach the well through underground seepage or be washed into it by heavy rains. Polluted water, poor sanitation, and lack of basic hygienic practices create a vicious cycle of infection and reinfection. The result is that many villagers are needlessly sick several times each year. And yet most of these problems can be eliminated by a few relatively inexpensive actions. To begin with, the area around the well should be kept clean. A concrete liner should be built down inside the well. But as long as the well is open, the water can still be contaminated, so the well should be covered with a concrete cap. A reliable hand pump should replace the bucket and rope. The surrounding area should have good drainage to prevent runoff water from contaminating the well and from forming stagnant pools where insects can breed. One alternative is to use the runoff water for irrigating a vegetable garden. A separate concrete surface should be constructed for washing clothes and bathing and the well area is complete. But even the cleanest drinking water will do little good in a dirty household where it can be easily contaminated. The yard around the house should be kept clean and waste properly disposed of. 
and kitchens kept clean will also reduce the risk of diarrheal disease. Water should be placed out of reach of animals and young children. The containers should be covered to prevent contamination by birds or by objects that could fall in. Water for cooking and drinking should be kept separate from water stored for other uses. It is especially important that hands be washed thoroughly after the latrine is used. If soap is not available, ash is the next best substitute. In fact, washing with soap or ash before handling food is essential for breaking the cycle of disease in the home. Dishes should also be cleaned thoroughly, and feeding bottles should be sterilized by boiling. But for the infant, breastfeeding is better protection against diarrheal disease, since mother's milk contains substances that prevent infection and is the best food. If a family practices good hygiene, the household will no longer be as great a source of infection and reinfection. But as long as the surroundings are contaminated by feces, diarrheal disease will remain a major problem. What is needed is a latrine that can be kept clean. Almost all communities can afford at least the basic pit latrine. And it is important to remember that latrines should be located downhill and away from the well. To bring about such changes in the community, people must work together. New ideas imposed on a village may not have any long-term effect if the villagers have not participated from the beginning. Village committees should take on the responsibility of selecting the site for the new technology and should provide labor and, if possible, materials. By their involvement, the new water and sanitation system will be truly their own. The choice of technology is important. Although there is no such thing as a perfect hand pump or a perfect latrine, that choice should take into consideration such factors as the funds and materials available, soil conditions and local customs. Hand pumps must be affordable, reliable, easy to install, and easy to maintain. Local people should be able to carry out most repairs. The availability of spare parts is an important factor, so there is a definite advantage to technology that can be manufactured locally. But technology alone will not bring about change in community health. There is a need for thousands of people in every developing country 
to be trained in the proper management of water and sanitation systems and in the promotion of good hygiene. People who will bring the message to their communities. Hygiene education for mothers is especially important because of their crucial role in the home. Households that adopt new hygiene practices will influence others to do the same. But health education should begin in the schools. Children are usually the first to take on new ideas and they can have an important influence in the home when they start putting their newfound knowledge into practice. Millions of children die every year because they are born into surroundings full of dangerous organisms that cause diarrheal disease. The cycle of infection and reinfection can be broken, however. Clean water, good hygiene and sanitation, community involvement and education, these are the agents of change. <laughs>